Day two. Day two. This is outrageous. Outrageous. I don't even know how to open the show, Steve. It's, it's day two of the ongoing saga that just when we think things are happy and resolved, things change 180 degrees. Yes. Um, I will say, though, uh, the nearly 15,000 subscribers that we have for this channel, you came out in full force. Uh, we can't thank you enough for all the support that you put out on um, Twitter. In the course of 36 hours, there were over 7,000 tweets at uh, Studio Canal. And in fact, it, it, come to find out, it wasn't even Studio Canal in the first place. It was all fact. They took the brunt of the uh, blame. So sorry, Studio Canal. Uh, we kind of blew up your Twitter, but hey, what can you do? Um, let's go ahead and take the smoking well, well, gun away. Well, it was on their behalf, so there, there, wait, wait, there is some culpability there because it is on their behalf. But Fact UK did take all responsibility for it, so... Yeah. Well, uh, we have a, uh, a fantastic show for you guys uh, today because I keep wanting to say tonight. You'll be seeing this during the day tomorrow. I have to get used to this. Damn it, Google. YouTube, fix this. Um, well, tell, tell them what's going on with YouTube because Fact UK has issued a submit a re, uh, thing to re, I guess, what, what it would be called. Um, you know, sum, they submitted a thing to retract their claim, admitting that it was an error. Yeah. Um, yeah, but um, YouTube doesn't yeah, seem to really care at this point. We'll go through this and then um, we'll, we'll introduce our guest tonight. I, I just I, I wanted to bring up a uh, a situation that I've, I've come to, I think, get to the bottom of. I'm like Matlock. OK, hold on. I can do my we'll do my dramatic glasses take off here when we get to that point. But um, I sent a email to what they call or what YouTube calls your your channel manager or your, your partnership manager. Now, one of the benefits, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the benefits that you get when you are over 10,000 subscribers is a kind of liaison or your ability to email when you have issues directly to YouTube. They don't do that for people with uh, less than that. Um, I don't know why. I think it's horrendous to not uh, try to help people who are putting content on your um, your platform. But nonetheless, that's one of their policies. So you would think this would be a good this would be a good time to use that. Let's call in the uh, the membership partner. So I emailed our membership partner earlier today and said, um, well, let's let's pull it up. I've, I've, I've sent it to to Dave and maybe we can zoom in a little bit on that because I cannot see what that says. <laughs> Bear with us one second, guys. We're going to uh, zoom in. Basically, it, it was something to the effect of, uh, I would like to rectify the situation. We There's been a retraction put in. Uh, please take the, the lean off of our live streaming, which this person said, uh, thank you for responding. Uh, I still can't read that. This is too blurry. You might have to fix the resolution, Dave, on my end just momentarily. And um, so I, I sent a specific request into, there we go. I sent a, a specific request into YouTube. I said, there's been a retraction made on a copyright strike. Please take our lean off of the, the live streaming. So they sent a email back. Thanks for responding. I've checked your account and I know that you've already, that you already need your live streaming. However, it shows that you'll need to wait for the strike to expire, it shows that it will expire on December the 13th. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. In the meantime, don't hesitate to contact us if you have any concern. Well, as you can imagine, I had a lot of fucking concern. So I did not hesitate to uh, respond to them because these were already facts that I knew. I knew that we had a strike that didn't expire on the 13th. However, it was retracted, meaning it was a mistake. So let's zoom in on, on this. My response to them was, I, I did resolve it. Fact UK issued the strike, and after we contacted them, they retracted it. Here's proof of their retraction, and it's from the same email that filed uh, the strike. Now, please restore my streaming rights, all right? And then there's, a, there's the tweet where Fact USA apologized for the inconvenience, said it was a mistake on their end. 
blah, blah, blah. So I waited patiently because I thought, well, this clears it up. This, there's no way that uh, there can be an issue now. It's clearly stated what my problem is. Well, this is the email that I got in response to that. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. They, they sent me an email back saying um, the same thing, basically. So then I sent this email to uh, our membership partner. Apparently, you guys don't read any of the emails I send. I specifically said that the company that filed the strike retracted it due to a mistake on their end. They've sent that in. We have the proof. Please try to actually respond to the issue that I put forth instead of pulling answers out of thin air and hoping they apply. I'm copying Gwen to this note that you are consistently failing to answer any of my questions that I have. It's outrageous that you reply to me with something that has nothing to do with the issue I put forth. Who is running things over there? And how is it that the whole system isn't broken when people assigned to help Content creators ignore the issues those creators are having. I was pissed. Okay. Yeah. And so, what help have they given us? Literally, what yeah. help have they provided to us? By, by, by telling us things that we already know, that's supposedly helping us? Well, um, we were getting ready to – actually, I was, uh, I was talking to our, uh, our guest um, back and forth right before we, we went live on the, the show. And then I got this email. This was sent to, I, I tried sending it to a different one. I tried a, a different um, person. So this is what Jade says. So that same response that I put out. Hi there, hope you're doing well. I'm not doing well, Jade. If you want all the necessary rights to the content in question, you can file a copyright infringement notification using this form. Our copyright team will review it. And if the notification is valid, the video will be removed. Well, Jade, I'm not calling to or I'm not writing to file a DMCA <laughs> on somebody. I'm the party that got the DMCA filed on them. So I express oh, this God. to Jade. Let's see how Jade responds. Oh, th then here's my response to, to Jade. I sent the same thing that I sent to the first one. Same exact thing, word for word. Okay. Here was the next email that I got. <clears throat> Go ahead, Dave. There we go. Hi, Kyle. Thanks for your response. Your channel's, your channel's live streaming ability will be automatically disabled for any of the following reasons. Your channel receives a, a community guideline strike. Your live stream or archive uh, stream is blocked globally or your stream uh, receives a copyright takedown. Okay. We can we can move that out of the way and, and get... Um, well, let's uh, put our, uh, our guest of the evening up so that he can chime in if he has anything that he wants to add. But let me say this. This is my Matlock moment, okay? Um, I realize that uh, we aren't dealing with a membership partner. We're not dealing with a human being. This is a robot. These are uh, this is artificial intelligence that's picking out keywords that I have been emailing all day long trying to get this resolved. And it's picking out the keywords based on how I put them in the email and flooding me with a standard response. It's ridiculous. But anyways, let's before we go on any further than that, let me introduce our uh, our guest for tonight. I'm very excited to uh, have this individual. I saw him on one of my favorite channels, which is uh, Pine Creek. That is Doug. Uh, he does fantastic interviews. He's a master of, I think, um, just even his cadence alone, the way that he paces himself in an interview, I just think it's fantastic. So if you haven't checked out Doug's channel, make sure you do that. But, um, and you're going to have to help me because I struggle with English words. Um, so you're gonna have to help me out with your, uh, your life. I'm going to call you Vic if that's cool. Yeah, that works. Vic is perfect. And, and how do you say your last name? You can, you can call it, you can say Evasion. That's the easiest way to say it. It's like the American way of Evasian. saying it. Yeah. I can actually handle that. So what is the non-American way of saying it? I'm just curious. Ivazian. Avazian, Avazian, Avazian. He can't enough. even get. It. Yeah, <laughs> I can't, I, if I can't get it, there's no hope for anybody. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, well. Welcome, okay. Vic. We're, we're happy to have you. Uh, we're we're going to be talking about. Thank you. Uh, Vic is actually recently uh, deconverted from uh, religion. I feel for him because I went. I went through the same thing, the same process almost. There, there's that whole. You grow up following a certain ideology and then when the cracks appear in the dam and the the flood is breaking it's it's a whole process to try to get through that and then, you know who are you and and what have you been doing with your your, your life you, you, there's all kind of emotions that go along with that so i want to get into 
to those. Um, but before we go there, Steve, do you have anything else that you wanted to add to this debacle with the copyright? Um, only for the fact that I do want to reiterate that these are not human beings that we're dealing with. And it's kind of misleading to think that we're being told we have some kind of community uh, liaison between us and, and YouTube because we've reached the 10,000 mark. That's not necessarily the case because these have been automated responses. We've sent numerous emails to YouTube. Kyle's exactly right. They pick out keywords, key phrases, and you get a form letter, chain letter. It, you might as well deal, be dealing with somebody from Pornhub or Chatterbait or something because it's just like the same technology that they use, right? So Steve. I'm a little bit thoroughly disgusted with that. And by the way, I don't know from experience. I just heard that from other people, no. but I'm using that as an analogy. So, so that uh, so that Vic doesn't think that you're a, a creepy perv. Let me explain why he said that. <laughs> um, we, we we last night we had a uh, we had porn star Mercedes Carrera on here, um, and so Steve still yes, we did. reeling from from yes, we having the interview with the uh, the porn star. So, um, yeah. smart any, porn any star. Kind of, that's, no, that's the key any, word. <laughs> uh, intelligent porn star. That was that's what made it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, people people uh, responded to her overwhelmingly today like oh, they love i was her. not ready i was not ready for the amount of love that uh, mercedes got but people love mm -hmm. mercedes um so mercedes we will definitely love to have you back i um it, my, the last thing that i'll say about this is that if you want help in if you're a content creator and you're bummed out that you you don't have that personal access to uh your membership partner just if you have a phone pull up Siri and ask it a question about um, a tunnel mm -hmm. somewhere in Afghanistan. And that will be the same exact beneficial help that you'll get from uh, yep. the Google membership partner. You're not missing out on a thing. Yep. So and I um, do want to say that I have been dealing with fact UK. They do have some contrition. They know they screwed up. They're very apologetic. We have already said yeah. we do accept their apology. However, it is affecting us um, because of the time zone difference. It sucks because by the time we reach back to them, they're already closed again, so we got to wait again until the morning. But I've already reached out to them again. Maybe they can ensure that they rescinded this properly, at least double check on that, um, and then we're yeah. going to go from there and let you go. Uh, so, Vic, why don't you take a second to introduce yourself to everybody and uh, let everybody know a little bit about you. I, I need to say first, I think, I hope I don't, I hope I'm not getting this wrong, but uh, congratulations are in order because you are recently <laughs> engaged, correct? Yeah, I yeah. am. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, July. <laughs> July. So. Excellent. Excellent. When's the big day? It's actually May fourth next year. So. Oh it's man. Coming fast. It's coming up quick. Yeah, it's coming, it's coming up real quick. fast, Dan. So yeah, go ahead so, and uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Yeah, definitely. Well, my name is uh, Vic Avazian, and uh, recently deconverted uh, Christian. Hasn't been that long, actually. Um, I would say that it happened um the shift in my my mind uh happened in uh january of this year and um i didn't actually stop attending church um so i was still attending church even at, uh after there was a deconversion you know in my heart um up until may uh of this year so may i stopped attending and um uh yeah i i've been a christian basically my i mean basically my entire life i was raised a christian um, and, uh, held to a liberal Calvinist, uh, theological perspective. Um, I went, I attended many non-denominational, uh, Christian churches growing up, um, mostly in like the Southern California area, which is where I lived. Um, and, uh, I was just very well, uh, very deeply in entrenched in, uh, the Christian faith. And uh, it was just a difficult process uh, of coming out, um, uh, you know, to my my family, uh, to my mostly just to my parents actually. Um, it was, yeah, it was not easy. Um, I don't think it's easy really for anybody, but um, especially coming from that sort of background uh, where there isn't much liberality to have different differing views um, from uh, your kin. Uh, it's definitely it takes a lot of mental fortitude and whatnot um to be able to get through that so um and i'm still going through it now you know i'm still in the thick of it um really emotionally and whatnot so um Absolutely. yeah it's a little bit about cool. that i guess we can get in more into it yeah what kind of um what kind of christian were you like were you a 
a fundamentalist, like every word of the Bible is true, or were you, um, you said liberal Calvinist, is, is there, mm -hmm. I didn't know there was such thing as a liberal Calvinist, I thought they were all yeah. pretty. <laughs> well, I think like, we, I mean, wouldn't a Christian apologist, uh, you know, RCA, wouldn't he be more of a liberal Calvinist as opposed to like Matt Slick? I mean, were you like the, the, the real evangelistic fundamentalist type Calvinist like he'll Matt be Slick? Or, he'll be atheist. Well, more the old. The old, possibly. You know what? We're working on it. Um, I'd rather have him be an atheist than any than the, what he believes now because he's kind of going down a dark path, and I hope he comes back back from a little bit. But um, or were you more mm -hmm. the um, like the Ken Hoven type? Although he's not a Catholic um, Baptist. You gotta think. Probably. I don't know everything that Ken Hoven believes off the top, top of my head, but um, oh crap! Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty it, much. It wasn't like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it, I, I didn't hold to like a, uh, it, it wasn't full blown Calvinism. Um, they still believed that you had some choice in the matter of uh, salvation and being saved. Um, whereas like Calvinists don't think that you have, you're basically a, a, a robot, you know, um, right. and God, God chooses you. So um, there was choice there. Like if it, because and that's really because there's contradictory verses in the Bible. You have verses that say that God is doing it, and then you have verses that say that man is completely accountable for his sin, right? Yeah. Um, and even full-blown Calvinists will still be very, um, they won't be very clear if they're, they're pressed on that, you know, that idea of, well, you know, which is it? Is it man's fault or is it God's fault for uh, becoming or, or going to hell, you know, like for the... Uh, yeah, going down that path. So, um, yeah, it's really yeah. complicated. Uh, but I would definitely say that there was more choice in my theology. Um, so, what about on things like uh, evolution and uh, young Earth creation? Like, did you hold to evolution being a possibility, or was it that the Earth is six thousand years old? Um, there was Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Um, you know, because that's a, that's a split issue within um, the church even now. So, which side of the fence did you? land on that definitely young earth creationism really for sure yeah because um the from my perspective the uh evolutionary uh or or just like the old earth view was to me it was a uh, categorical of a more liberal christian who didn't really hold as uh, a tight of a uh, or, or like as strict of a theology when it came to um, Genesis or even a, a correct understanding of Genesis based on like, you know, um, the original translation, uh, like the, the original Hebrew of uh, translations of Genesis. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Did, were you a, were you a King James onlyist? No, <laughs> no, I, didn't, I wasn't King James onlyist. Probably should have been. Maybe if I was a Baptist, maybe I would have been closer to King James onlyist. See, that was me. But no. That was me. Oh, really? that, were you, until, were you a Baptist? Yeah, until, I was. I was a, um, and actually, okay. I was a, I was an independent Baptist, which is, if you think that uh, that Southern Baptists are too conservative or not conservative enough, you go independent Baptist. And uh, <laughs> up until I was uh, twenty five, I was hardcore into it. I mean, hardcore into it. And it was it was weird for me, and a lot different for me because I was at, I'm actually gay too. So trying to mm fit in the 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 being gay thing along with these super ultra conservative um values i mean i i, I knew what you were going through the we were hardcore young earth creationists i mean um mm -hmm. and looking back I'm, and i'm sure you'll 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 feel this way too eventually if you don't already but you wonder how you were ever ugh, you wonder how you were ever able to convince yourself that that was true that the earth is really 6,000 years old. And, um, you know, how are you on that now? Like going from the, uh, 6,000 years, the age of the earth being 6,000 years old to, I'm assuming now you're, you're more in tune with science and where we are nowadays with research yeah. that in that okay. with reality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Reality. Uh, so how, how did you square that? Um, what, what was it that made you, ultimately break you said back in january that the, the doubt started to come in what was that first mm -hmm. instance of doubt um well it was kind of like 
it was a process. So um, the eventual break, what, what eventually got me to really um, look at the problems um, and the questions closely was finding out that um, the whole ending of Mark was not supposed to be in there. Like the, the bracketed passages, the bracketed passage at the end of Mark was not, um, it, it was not part of the original manuscripts. Finding that out was like, that was, that just blew, blew me away. I, I couldn't, because basically I thought that the Bible that I was holding in my hand was exactly the, the Bible that was, um, uh, put together, you know, from the, from the earliest church that that's what I thought mm -hmm. that like for, it was the earliest writings. This was, this was God's word basically. Um, but to find out that there's, there's aspects of, um, of the Bible, um, or certain ideas in the Bible that were added later, I couldn't, there was no way that my, my mind could save my faith with that knowledge, um, with coming to that knowledge. So, um, it was really, that was really just like, it, it catapulted me into, a, into like a, an abyss, basically. That's, that's the way that I would describe it, uh, describe it emotionally. Like I didn't know where I almost, I didn't know who I was anymore. If, um, Been there. if that makes sense. Well, what you guys have a lot of common, I'm, yeah. I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest. I don't, uh, I'm not sure if I, if I'm familiar with what you're referring to about Mark and um, the adding in, that might be yeah. something new to me. What, what is that about? Yeah, it's, um, it's the last, um, it's basically the last, the, the ending of, of Mark where um, the woman, uh, one of the, the women go to the tomb um, um, and then uh, they find out that Jesus's body is not there. And, um, uh, they're told that that the body's that that uh, the body's basically missing, and um, they find that out, and then they run away in fear, basically, and they tell nobody, mm -hmm. and that's what it's that that's where it ends, um, and um, after that is all the rest of what's after that is bracketed, basically. It's not it wasn't in the earliest manuscripts. Isn't um, that highlighted the, in like a new version? Is it uh, an yeah. NAV or the is highlighted or in red or something like you said? So they do yeah. know they annotate in the new in the NS, NIV that that part was not in the original and is questionable Correct. of the authenticity of it, right? Correct. So this is the this is the yeah. So that's the amazing part about it is that you can go to the most uh, fundamentalist of preachers or Baptists or Christians and um, show them that. And there's they, they'll admit that that's not supposed to be in there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's not controversial. Does, that's, that's pretty well known. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, it's oh. it's frightening to me <laughs> because it's not the Bible and it's in the Bible. You know, so, it's, so, in, it's not an all version. Yeah, what tipped you off to that though. Um, like what if, you know, if you're going through, how old are you? Uh, if you don't mind me asking, first of all, I'm 26. So if you, if you go, let's say, 25 years reading the Bible, what was it that ultimately drew your attention to that particular part? Um, well, I was actually, I, I, was in, I was talking with a, guy, a friend of mine who uh, is also, uh, was also having a lot of these doubts and questions at the same time um, as I was, and uh, he was noticing things uh, that he, he, through the books that he was reading, like, for example, like, um, like Jesus interrupted, uh, by Bart Ehrman. And then he also read, uh, a marginal Jew by John Muir. Um, and they, they, they pick apart, um, you know, these passages, uh, and they describe what the problem is for any, any person of faith, not being able to have access to who the real Jesus is. Um, we only have a historical version of Jesus, which is basically, um, it's basically explained to us by Christians who won out all the arguments about all of this history and, and what the truth of it was, right? So um, that's all we have access to 
we don't have access to what actually happened. Um, and then, uh, and then my friend had, had, he pointed me to this because that's not the only, that's not the only passage that's not supposed to be in there. Um, there's, there's maybe like six or seven, um, uh, passages that are bracketed. Like we're supposed to be in there. (laughs) Yeah. Well, (laughs) yeah. Well, I mean, so the six or seven bracketed passages, um, approximately, are all there. None of them were in the original manuscripts. You know, it's like the woman at the well was not supposed to be in there. Um, passage that was uh, uh, basically confirming the Trinity is not supposed to be in there. Like, <laughs> like uh-huh. just straight added material um, that we know for sure is added, that was not part of the original manuscripts, that Christians can't deny. It doesn't right. matter how right. fundamentalist you are. That is fascinating. But that, that, did, that, you, did you? That was. Go ahead, that, that was more convincing to you than the than the um, like reading about science and seeing that maybe like for, like Kyle had asked you about the age of the earth. You you do know realize now that's not true. Which was more convincing yeah. to you, or was this like the catalyst that got you started, and then you started researching other things and looking into the, the dogma a little more more. Um, this was the catalyst. Code. Yeah, gotcha. this was the catalyst because for me it was about clarity and continuity in the Bible. And if there wasn't clarity and continuity, continuity in what the Bible was, was teaching, I don't see how there's a, a clear way to be able to, um, to infer what we should be believing about it. Right. What we should, how we should, what we should extrapolate out from it, um, as a correct orthodox belief. Um, and then that just gives way to confusion. You can you can think whatever you want about it, and you can be right, because there's no orthodox, correct way from God that anybody can pick up and believe. And that is, you know, that would be the salvation, you know, imparted to man, basically from God. Is because otherwise we just have man's words, and and it's not. It's not something that is, um, yeah. It's not something given of God, given from God. For nine for nine months in, I say he's got the atheist thing down pretty well already, don't you, Steve? I think he's, uh, you, know, you know, it's funny. He's, he's good. You both, both of you guys um, are actually a testimony to an argument that I've actually had for a very long time, and that younger creationism actually converts more people to atheism than what I've seen from atheist advocates, um, because you both well, have. Well, the, I wouldn't say. That. Well, I mean, I it, it's not just okay. – well, but but people that – maybe it wasn't so much the knowledge of that it was wrong, but people that used to be young earth creationists tend to go go to the atheist route rather than something more along the lines of a young earth creationist to old earth creationist route. That does happen, but more often sure. a young earth creationist, when they, when they find things to be a, a flawed, when they find the Bible not to be er- inerrant, when they find discrepancies, they're not as yeah. easily able to reconcile that as some other – more mainstream that say, yeah, you know what, there's some problems, and they maybe change to a different type of ideological belief. I see that let much me, more me, frequently from ex young creationist. Let me put it to, let me let me say it like this, and um, Vic, you see, you tell me if you agree with this. Um, the young earth cre- the the young earth creationism part of it, we can um, we can square because of the uh, we are told that there are going to be people who try to deceive us. Um, it's a fate thing. It's not something that uh, that we really put that high on a pedestal. You, I think what happens is when the when the doubt comes in and you start to see things a little bit more clear, that becomes more of an obvious, you know, what the fuck issue. But it's not so. It, it's not a make or break when you're in. Uh, that comes later. the The younger creationism comes after whatever it is that the catalyst is that that breaks you breaks you free for me it was the the slavery thing um i Mm -hmm. i had been to the church for 25 years of my life and it would make sense that you don't hear sermons preached about those verses but to be honest with you i never heard them until that guy in my youth group was watching an an r and raw video with him and matt dillahunty on the atheist experience and i heard him reading from the bible this horrible thing about slavery and how it was you know it was okay, okay to beat a a slave within an inch of his life and i was like that's not from the bible like he's making this up he is literally making this up and when i went home and read it it was there 
It was there. It's it, shocking it's amazing to how... see that, though. It is. It's uh, it's uh, it's very jarring. And um, I'll let uh, I'll let Vic, you know, speak to his personal experience. But briefly, for me, uh, I'm having to deal with learning two people at the same time. Uh, the the Kyle that I was after the doubt came in was a completely different me. Number one, because I was finally able to be out, you know, in, in terms of like being gay, I was able to embrace who I was. Number two, I had lost that that faith and that religion that had been with me for 25 years, too. So the Kyle that I knew that that next day had no idea who he was. It was like a complete mm. it was like being a completely different person. I mean, nothing that you had in that day before is there anymore. It's it's gone. Right. And um, I, I hope uh, and this is why I can I, I was telling Doug, um, talk to you like uh, you seem like you are, and watching your interview with him, you seem like you were in a much better place than, than I was when I, because when I came out and, um, you know, you, you feel like you lose everything like that. That's when I got really bad on drugs. The drugs led me to, um, you know, deeper and deeper and down into the, the valley. And uh, it was a dark place for me. So um, I'm, I'm glad to see that you seem like you are, I mean, you're getting ready to get married. Things are on the up and up. Um, yeah. Make sure you surround yourself with with people that are going to be positive and, and get you through that. But uh, to, to speak yeah. to your point about the um, the Bible verses that, verses that aren't supposed to be in there, did you ever did you go and talk to your either your pastor or uh, your parents and try to get answers as to why that was the case and what did they tell you if um, you did that? Um, let's see, I reached out to uh, one of, or the pastor of the church that I was going to. Um, he didn't, I don't really remember getting much of a straight answer as far as, um, you know, to this, the particular problems that I was addressing. It, he more, it was more like he just wanted to meet with me and kind of talk through these issues with me in person. Um, and I felt like that sort of encounter was going to be rather manipulative. So mm -hmm. I just, there was no, I didn't see any, I didn't see any value in meeting up with, with my pastor. So I just, you know, I went back and forth with him in a couple of emails. Um, and he was, he was pretty, he was pretty, um, yeah, he was pretty polarized, uh, on his end of, um, uh, like on in his point of view, he he wasn't really interested in considering the fact that um, that it's it's it, there's a lot of things that are very reasonably doubtable within the faith, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, essentially, he just disagreed, and then um, he thought that I was basically giving myself over to scientism. Was was his perspective oh, no. on it? Oh, uh, we love that word. Not scientism. Yeah. It, it, yeah. <laughs> it is a real word. It does exist, but it's it's one of the most abused apologetic words in the history of That's apologetics. Awful. Use that word so badly. Never. They never yeah. get it right. Um, I've never I don't did, think I've did, seen a single apologist get the word correct. Not one. Did you feel Maybe. if did I, you feel I do betrayed? I don't did you feel betrayed um when that happened? Like uh almost take it personally that you see these things that are clearly wrong in the Bible, but yet you're you're being talked to like it's your issue, like you're the one that's got the the problem. You're not reading it right, or you're having the lack of faith. It's not that their their lack of acknowledging what's right there in front of their face. You're being painted as the one that's um, that, and that's the that's the most deceptive thing about religion is that when you finally start to see clearly and you see the, through the cracks and where the issues are, they paint you to be mm -hmm. the, the heretic. It's something wrong with, with you. How did that, um, that go with you? Um, I mean, I guess I don't really feel like I was, he was painting me as a, as a heretic. Um, he just paint what I, what I didn't appreciate is that he was painting me um, in such a way that made me feel like I was I was polarized into my way of looking at things, rather than I was just trying to be fair and even-handed 
with the information, which is what I was really trying to do. Um, and it wasn't about, uh, you know, I, it wasn't about that I, I, oh, this guy just has this opinion and um, I'm re-indoctrinating myself into a different mm -hmm. belief system. It's I'm trying to really analyze and critically think about this information. And it's like that wasn't computing for him. It's like he, he never he never really doubted. I, I, I got the impression he never really doubted his beliefs. And that was what I was seeing, his reaction, his negative reaction to me. Um, and also uh, with my parents, uh, uh, more so with my dad, but um, they, they just, they've never really put themselves into that place of doubt because, and I can, I, I understand why, you know, there's really good reasons as to why you wouldn't put your, yourself in that place because it's very, sure. it can be very intellectually and psychologically damaging for a person if they're not ready for that. It takes a lot Ooh. of strength to, to go through something like that. And it's not, it's not an easy process and, and it's not a safe feeling. Um, and so I, I, I get why people do that. I get why Christians do that. I just wish that there would be more understanding from Christians um, when people aren't, they're not attacking them as people. Um, they just don't understand, or they just don't, they just don't, um, it just doesn't make sense to them anymore. You shouldn't be demonized for that. I agree. So. Uh, it's it's a defense mechanism. I think they uh, yeah. they don't want to they don't want that doubt to creep into their own. Head. So by just completely right. shutting it out and and stopping it before the conversation even starts, there's none of that. Uh, I think on a on a human level, everybody, I don't care how devout you are, at some point has something happen where their faith teeters and um, starts to waver. Even they may never talk about it, but that happens. And mm -hmm. yeah. that feeling, they try their best to never have again. Because think about it, you you grow up, especially down here in the South. I mean, everybody is just, I mean, from the time you are able to walk and, and talk and, and learn, you're learning the Bible. And you grow up with this mm -hmm. your entire life. And you think that, you know, all of your friends and your, your relatives that have uh, passed on before you, you think, oh, well, that's okay. It won't be long. I'll see them again. And when that time comes where that fleeting moment comes in your mind where it's like, well, what if you don't, you know, what if that's not the case? No one wants to go through uh, that again. So when you decided that, you know, this was just something that you weren't going to get reconciled, like you were coming out of the, the faith, who did you tell first? And then, um, who was the hardest person that you told? Um, definitely hardest person was my dad. Um, I think the first person I told was uh, my girlfriend, who's now fiance. Um, and there was a little bit of pushback from her at first, but then she understood where I was coming from because she's had doubts at one point. Um, my dad... I mean, um, he says that he comes from a skeptical place. Um, I just feel like he's too invested in it emotionally, culturally, et cetera, that it just, it causes, uh, it causes, you know, just conflict between us. Um, and I didn't I actually, the, the first, right. yeah. Well, I mean, the, the first conversation that I had with him was actually really good. I thought it was really fruitful. Um, but you know, come to find out in the second conversation, it actually, he was actually quite vehemently supposed, opposed to um, what I was, you know, some of the things that I was telling him in the first conversation, um, which was just about, you know, I was airing out some of my doubts, telling him about the ending of Mark, which he hadn't heard before. Um, and I was like, I'm not really surprised because Christians don't learn about this stuff in church. It's not commonly taught in church. And why would it be? Because um, this is what it does to people. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it was, it, it got worse the more we talked about it basically with my dad. And, um, I was scared to tell him at first because that was, I knew that was going to be the response because that's just the way that he is, you know? So, um, yeah. Is your, yeah, is your, um, is, is your fiance still religious? I'm oh, sorry. Say that again. I'm sorry. 
Is your fiance still religious? Girlfriend? Yeah, she's still religious. Oh, um, no, I, I would say that she's just basically neutral <laughs> at this point. She's like, uh, like she, I mean, she, yeah. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, a true, I'm not a true neutral. Um, I don't think. I don't know if it's possible to even be true neutral on certain things. I mean, like yes, you, you know, are. people people do He's people do get conditioned. But th- same as a weak atheist, right? So, um, but that's no. you know, conditionally speaking, people when they go through these things and they realize things that don't sit well with them. See, I was fortunate, right? Um, I've always enjoyed science, and so I am one of those people. I don't take things at face value. I believed. I have reasons to believe back then, right? I mean, I didn't take things like blind faith. There was reasons why I had a particular belief. However, I wasn't married to them to the point where nothing could come in the way of them because I do believe that beliefs can be wrong. And I never had this relationship like some people talk about, like, oh, you have this one-on-one relationship with Christ or something. Never happened. Never happened. I, 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 matter of fact, my entire time being a theist, which was with the LDS church, I didn't know much about Christ. I mean, it was just like, Okay, it's Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints, Saints, and they are Christian. But you know what? I didn't have this feeling like I had this relationship with them. They all like all these other Christians talk about. But mm. as I learned more things, I had an open mind. And what I find is that when you have people such as what you're describing from your father that are so indoctrinated and so ingrained with this mentality that you cannot question anything because it's considered to be a sin sometimes by some people that they don't have the mindset. They don't have the open mindedness to to go, well, maybe what? Let's look into this. Let's find reasons if this is actually true or not because they're not true seekers. What they are 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 people that just want to have confirmation of existing beliefs. And that's what I think the difference is by somebody. Yeah, well, it feels good not to have conflicting beliefs, right? So if somebody, instead of having to deal with those conflicts, like you said, Kyle, perfectly, they just discount them. They don't deal with them. They, they have a defense mechanism. Then they don't have to worry about that feeling of conflict in themselves because there's nothing to be had. They're, they're, everything, everything conforms to their worldview regardless of if it happens to be truth or not. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what um, – we get an amen? That's exactly what I'm saying. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is where I wish we the live chat. Be like mic drop. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, I, I keep looking down at where I usually keep the, the monitor for the, the live chat at. And it's driving it's me nuts. A, I can't a, handle this, man. This is a blank <laughs> I can't handle it. It's um, very disconcerting. I'm having an existential so, crisis here. Where are you people? So, where are you on my monitor? Where is your, um, where is your mindset at in terms of the, the future? Like, now that you're out, what are your plans? Because obviously you're um, you're wanting to do. I'm assuming, and you can tell me if I'm wrong. But when you reached out mm-hmm. to Doug, you wanted to tell your story. You, you obviously want to get involved in some way, shape, or form with the. Um, uh, would you consider yourself an atheist, agnostic? Like, where do you where do you fall on that? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, basically atheistic, agnostic, kind of just like in that agnostic leaning atheist in that sort of space. Like Steve, like Steve. Yeah. Right, Steve. Like, <laughs> uh, so are, are I'm you, not, I'm not, I'm not agnostic atheist, but I'm just saying I'm just agnostic. Um, I, I just can't stand that term. I don't think nobody, nobody no. believes he's really agnostic. He's as atheist as the rest of them, especially when we get into our next topic. Um, you'll see the atheist side of him come out, but, um, no, where, you'll see my, an, you'll see you my anti-theist side come out. There's a difference. That's me. That's my language. Um, what what are you wanting to do? Are are you wanting to get involved in the uh, the community? Are you gonna you know? Are you looking to get in some activism? Because I had that same uh, like drive once I uh, eventually had my head cleared, and I was like, you know what? I feel like I need to almost get back at the the mean old religion that had taken twenty five years of my life. You know what I mean? Like it starts out as a um, oh, as a big fuck you to. Uh, uh, you know, to, to that that waste of time, it feels like because you spend all that all those years and uh, the things that you missed out on because you were you know beholden to a a certain way of of doing things. I'm not saying you know that you have to go out and go crazy and, and party or whatever, but admittingly, you miss out on a bunch of things because you're you know you have a youth program or because you, you can't be around these people because they're they're not godly and you know what I'm saying you're just ripped from a 
all of these possibilities. So what are you looking to, uh, to do? What's the future like for, uh, for you and the, the atheist movement? Um, it's a good question. I, I've thought, uh, a little bit about it, but not really too much. Um, you know, because, you know, I, I, I respect people to believe whatever it is that they want to believe. Um, and so I don't really, I don't really have anger in, I have anger and I don't, it's, I, I kind of have like both feelings swirling around just depending on, uh, what it is I'm reading. Like if I'm reading, you know, some of Bart Ehrman's stuff, then I'm, I'll might have some of the anger swirling, but you know, just that generally, um, I respect if, if someone is, is deeply religious or, um, if someone's a Christian and, and they need that, you know, I'm, I'm happy to respect that. You know, I'm, 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 I'm happy to, um, allow for them to believe in a God and, um, and to be okay with that if it's going to help their mental health or, or sustain their mental health, you know? So, yeah. um, so basically, you know, I don't know if this is related to, I mean, it, it is, it, I guess it's kind of related. I've been really interested in um, just the human mind and how the human mind basically um, compartmentalizes all the, all these different things like belief and, um, and, and, and development and cognitive dissonance and, and, cog and bias and all these different um, concepts. Um, so uh, I'm, I want to be, become a psychologist. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be going to school for that uh, next year. Um, and uh, I'm going to try to eventually pursue a psychology doctorate um, nice. and uh, basically help people that have mental illness or, um, you know, and, and there's a large part of that that can involve the idea of God. Um, but you don't necessarily have to be a Christian to be a psychologist. You don't necessarily have to be religious. Um, sure. You just have to understand the mind. And I feel like from going through this whole experience of uh, being caught up in belief and then coming out of belief and being able to see belief from a third, like a third person perspective, um, I'm much, I'm in a way better position to be able to understand the mind um, in uh, when, it, when the mind is stuck in a certain groove, if that makes sense. Um, Absolutely. And, you, and um, yeah, just talk, to be able to talk, analyze mental, mental processes, you know. You talk about um, uh, the, the mental health thing. Um, if you need, I don't know if you've seen much of our channel, but um, our most of our about 80 percent of our channel is a is a psychology study it's a it's a tour de force of um really is. mental uh mental health um uh, from people who yeah. believe that um the earth is flat people who don't think viruses exist they think that they're cgi people that think that uh, fossils were planted a long time ago by um this, this order in order to fool mankind into thinking that the earth is older than it really is. Um, people that heal people through Skype. Um, we've had all of those. So if you ever Cell need phone. a case study, a case study to, uh, to do, uh, for your psychology then just pick an episode, We're, uh, just close your eyes and burn to an episode yeah. and you'll, uh, you'll be good. Yeah. yeah cell phone. I think, I think the problem, That's in two weeks. Yeah, cell phone. I think the problem is that beliefs don't exist in a vacuum. Cause I mean, I find this too, two kind of, and I hate to overgeneralize, but I'm going to just for this arg argument, uh, two types of atheists out there. Um, ones generally just don't care what people think or believe if it's their own belief, right? If you just say, I believe in God, blah, 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 and you're just a normal functioning person that, you know, wants secularism and whatever, that's not the ones they're after, right? Um, but some of them, some of them actually really do want to, to, to change the way people believe because for some reason I think that that's kind of a believe like me or or you know somehow it is offensive, right? They they want or you're dumb. even the, even even the atheists want yeah they want some kind of confirmation. They want people to say you know what I'm going to convince you to think like me because you know I have that that wanting to be right. But I think the mass majority that I see personally, and I fall into this as a non-believer, I more concerned about the positions that affect us in reality, right? I mean when people are advocating positions that harm things, jilly juice. Um, advocating you know b17 for cure for cancer um advocating advocating promotion of cre uh, uh, creationism in school those things 
that's where we say enough. That's where we say we cannot have this kind of stuff. It's not so much, you know, people people are out there going, let's stop, you know, all religion. There might be a few of them, but even those people, most of them, it's only like let's start stop the harmful religions, right? Mm-hmm. So right. most right. atheists are not out there just just rampantly, you know, as I as Shannon as loves this as as she describes it as doing parkour, just hyperactively knocking Red Bulls out of people's hands as they as they go through, you know, promoting atheism. That's how she, someone described it with her. Um, it doesn't happen. Like something it really do. doesn't happen. It's, yeah, exactly. I, matter of mm-hmm. fact, someone needs to make that a meme with uh, Shannon Q. Just having doing do this that. like we didn't do that. Like, in part um, four, going around knocking Red Bulls out of people's hands. So what? Uh, where do you? I'm trying to think of how how to phrase this because the the thing that I struggled with is the one question that it, it took me a long time to kind of, I guess, settle and or the one searing question it, that lingered with me through the religion phase when I crossed over into the atheist thing is I couldn't ever get out of my mind where it all came from. You know, the, uh, and still to this day, uh, uh, me and Steve had a conversation the other night. Um, I'll still sometimes rack my brain going, what was before the Big Bang? Not in so, not in a, a God did it way, just because, I, you know, the mind's always trying to find answers. And so you go to these places. Well, there was obviously something before the Big Bang. What was it? You know, and um, do you do you still have those thoughts where um, you take a step back and you go, what what if I'm completely wrong? Oh, yeah, all the time. That's yeah. I mean, I think that's actually the healthy part of being agnostic um, or just acknowledging the fact that you don't know anything before, you know, coming to the evidence. Right. Um, I think that's really the best way to approach um, uh, any sort of, uh, coming to a belief system or, or h- how to decide what belief system to, to pick. Um, if you're going to be religious, let's say, um, you should start from a place of, I don't know anything because you don't, I mean, you, you basically, you start life as a blank slate and you figure it out as you go along. Um, right. So, uh, I, yeah, I definitely have those questions all the time. Um, I don't know what was before the big bang. I'm not going to uh, assume I know, um, I'm not going to assume that, um, it's, uh, because we, I mean, we're, we're working on trying to figure that out. Um, and it takes time to, to discover that. And we just have to be okay with not knowing things. We, we have to be okay with admitting that, that we don't know things and, um, and not put an answer in an uncomf- in that blank space to make myself feel better or make my my in group feel better about ourselves because it, it creates well this psychological disconnect of in group out group thinking that causes all sorts of uh, trouble and oppression and uh, suppression. Um, and just uh, you know, anger, hurt feelings in the world that we just don't need. Um, and like uh, one of you guys had said it earlier about like um, how uh, just um, you know, with the uh, the genesis, the old Earth versus new Earth. Somebody who's an old Earth creationist, or uh, they like they're more loose when it comes to. Um, uh, like if they're, you know, if they don't know something about the text or if they, if they're not uh, read up on something, there might be, they might be a little bit more loose when it comes to the old earth, uh, if they're an old earth creationist, um, which mm-hmm. would make sense um, given the fact that they're not holding to this idea with absolute fervor. Right. And that's the problem. That's the whole problem. It's that because all these ideas, inerrancy, old earth, or, or I'm sorry, new earth creationism, flat earth in some circumstances, you're just holding to this idea regardless of the evidence and you're not approaching the evidence agnostically to figure out, well, what is the truth about this? You know, how about we just try to figure out what the answer is together? You know, um, that takes a certain amount of humility that some people just don't want to employ. So, 
it, that, and that's the stuff that you, you bring up something that pisses me off. It pisses me off that we, we don't have all the answers. That's what makes me angry. I, I want to know, like, <laughs> before I pass on, I want to know what was before this big bang. I have There's to find so out. much to know. I mean, you know, but you live in a good time, right? I mean, can you imagine how much more we know now than we're living 200 years ago? No, I think it's, I, I look at it this way, like, it's, I think it's nonsensical to even ask certain questions, like, what is before the big, game? It, big bang? It's not a coherent sentence to me. But asking more, like, you know, questions like, that's you're, what? That's because you're weird. Well, <laughs> well, that's because I actually understand what the big bang is. Um, so you can't ask certain I questions. Everybody like that. understands what the Big Bang question. is. Well, 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 okay, hold on. Let's let, let's walk. You can't this. ask certain questions when it comes to certain things, hold right? On. There's a nonsensical question no, no, to say on. what hold happens on. before the Big Bang. Hold on. Time out. Chill. Chill. There's chill. No chill, time. Chill. Time out. Number number one, I did. I, I can't ask because I did. But he, follow me here. Right, but not, okay, it's a nonsensical so, question. Okay. Is what I'm hold on. Hold on. Chill. Okay. So the Big Bang happens, right? Boom. You get the big, the big. Pow, the big bang, right? All right. Now, when I close my hands, right, and, and I make this motion, the big bang, okay, this point before it doesn't, is there no such thing? It, it's like, no, that's not, that's not how it works. I guarantee it. Is no, there no, there's no bang. No, there's no bang. Oh you, the big bang, oh the big bang is, is a period of expansion. Yeah. Right. It's space time is itself almost, is inflating. It's almost right? a misnomer. <laughs> It is a misnomer. It's completely a misnomer because one, it's not an, like it's not like an explosion because an explosion you have know, mass being ejected yeah. per unit volume, right? Sorry, but Vic, we're, the we're Big Bang our, was, a, our, was actually our, a period of time mother, where the universe itself is, is was right expanding. <laughs> but I'm, my point being is that there's certain questions that are just nonsensical. I tell you right now, that is one question that is not, it's just not formed properly to ask what that is, is so bizarre. The Big Bang. That is so bizarre to me. Why? It, it, well, because it's, it's, a, it's time zero. It's literally time zero. What happens before time does not time exist. If, if time didn't exist, how do you ask a coherent question of what happens before something if there's no such thing as time? Okay. We can't before spend too is, much time is on a this. measurement have, relative to we, something. We can't spend, listen, we, we can't spend too much time on this, but let, let me see if I can. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Can, he, he thinks colors are real, it. okay? Stick with me on this one, okay? Trust me. Let me, let me ask <laughs> in a different way, though. Um, okay, so the, uh, the process of the Big Bang. Um, and that would be everything that we know that's in existence coming forth, right? The motion of it coming forth, where is it coming forth from? A quantum foam bubble that exists in a metastable false vacuum due to instabilities between the relationship of energy and time. Cool. Now, where did that come from? <laughs> that is ubiquitous. It's brute fact that it exists in my ontology. Yeah, but it had to have a, a beginning, right? No. No. No, it doesn't. That's retarded. That's retarded. I can't even... <laughs> well, why why, this, why does something have to have a beginning? We have to cut this there's no, there's out nothing, of the uh, There's we, nothing ontologically speaking that you can't see have a, a, Steve going an infinite change of, let, chain of causality. We cannot let the only things that have to exist, the only things that have to exist are metaphysical <laughs> necessities, okay? Are, but if things are all contingent... Wait, Steve, weren't we talking about Vic's... Vic's deconversion yeah. here. Let's get back. Yeah, we're, 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 we're Vic's gonna learn this stuff. Vic, an Vic's end. smart. We're witnessing smart. He's gonna learn this end. stuff. Listen, I don't have to butter him up to, for him to take my side because he sees exactly where I'm coming from here. Uh, in in terms of, the, I, I'm not. The I don't know. Of, he hasn't weighed in on it. He's, he's done the smart thing. He's shut the fuck up and just listened. He doesn't want to get involved in this. Okay, <laughs> I'm not going to so, ask him uh, for unless he wants to give it. Vic, I, I just fine. You um. I like this At the end, I'm gonna ask you. At the end, I'm gonna ask you to um. There he goes, buttering you up again. Uh, no, he's end, not going to answer. Why do I have to butter up? <laughs> at the end, Vic, we're going to let well you liked. give some I advice. To butter people up. We're going to give you some. Uh, let you give some advice to people who might be um, thinking about coming out of um, Christian or you know religion as a whole. But um, we're going to shift gears for a second and talk about a um, an issue that we've actually been battling people with um, over the past couple of days. <laughs> on um on twitter and we'll get you your opinions and what you think you heard i assume about the uh, the grand jury report in pennsylvania that handed down um all those documents with all of those priests that had uh abused the kids in pennsylvania it was august the 14th that report came out are you familiar with that um i i've been so uh ensconced in studying for the gre that i just haven't heard anything about that oh good oh no this is good i don't know if i don't know if we should 
Uh, yeah, that's, no, it's that. Cabo Rasa. He's, 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 he's a perfect person. He's, he's got a clean slate on this, so he's not familiar with it. So maybe we yeah, should, but if, you know, if I could go back him. and not learn about it, I would, I would take that opportunity. Um, anyways, the, the, no, I, that's fair. Seen, I mean, that's, this, is more, this is an ethical question now. Do we corrupt him by exposing him to things that probably are going to change his entire, you know, worldview on the humanity of of, of, of the world? I don't know. Well, the we're going to have well, you already you already did that with your Big Bang um, fiasco. But, <laughs> that's uh, not an ethical well, question. Seen, that's I've physics. Seen, uh, I've seen Spotlight, um, that movie, so I'm pretty yeah, familiar it, with Priestley. Yeah, mm, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's similar <laughs> okay. to that. Um, I'm trying to pull up the. Um, I've got it right here. Um, I'll give you just a. Here we go. I'll give you just a an, uh, an overview. Um, they found that uh, m- much like Spotlight, they went back in through um, this these couple of dioceses in Pennsylvania, and they found that over the course of 30 years, um, over 300 priests had abused over a thousand uh, kids. And the church had spent millions in relocating these priests, circumventing the law, mm. paying off people, um, taking, putting these priests in different parishes, continuing to pay their salaries, uh, dragging the clock along so that the statute of limitations could um, expire. And so we got into a... Uh, question and um i'm just gonna ask your honest opinion and you you know we're not gonna give you an indication which way we lean one way or the other but if knowing this and the when this report came out right and it goes as high up as the the pope and cardinals knowing that this is going on signing off on these priests being transferred to other um, parishes instead of handing them over to the police like they should if you are a catholic and you continue knowing this to either donate or tithe to the Catholic Church. Do you think that in some way makes, at this point, them complicit, knowing that this is only one state that this investigation has been going on in? They are now opening up investigations all across the nation and all across the world. So this is about to get a whole lot uglier. Well, there's two other reports. Two. One came in from Germany the other day, and one from from uh, the Dutch came in the other, just like yesterday. So there's two more reports, very similar to Pennsylvania. Sure, and that's what I'm saying. They're, they're going to get worse. But if you go to church on Sunday and you're paying, you know, you're, you're tithing, knowing that this is what came out in the report, and it goes as high up as the Pope, does that make you complicit now in what's going on? Um, it definitely, it's definitely encouraging. It's definitely encouragement. <laughs> I don't know if it makes you directly complicit, but I mean, morally. How about this? Morally, we, we, yeah. I, my argument is morally complicit. It's not criminally, right? Complicit usually means yeah. that you have some kind of big criminal um, responsibility because you are enabling some type of crime to right. take place, right? Um, mine is a right. moral complicit because you're you're literally giving fundage that some of that fundage the four billion dollars was spent by the church to cover these things up and to pay off uh, victims and, and to prevent them from going to the police and all this other stuff four billion dollars right almost four billion dollars some of that money you're paying to the church is going into this funding it's it's a fact there's not even an argument we have for that so in some ways mm-hmm. you i believe that they are morally culpable in, in to some degree now i've had one person yeah. so far one catholic one say until they resolve this, I'm no longer donating and tithing. That was the only person that I saw any moral integrity of whatsoever. From, from well, let's get his thoughts just, on it, and then we'll we'll explain um, we'll explain what's going on on Twitter. But what what are your thoughts on that, Vic? Yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah, it's definitely encouraging um, for people who are in the Catholic Church that are okay with that. I mean, it doesn't matter what church you're in, from my perspective. You know, um, if you're in if you're a Muslim. And you know, and you you stop tithing in 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 the in the in the mosque, um, uh, that would be in my eyes a moral good because you're not um, you're not part of in any way, shape, or form all of the just all of the horrible doctrine that is in the Quran. You know, it, it, you're not supporting the spreading of those ideas, um, which is. Uh, just as important to me as the 
as the actual physical abuse of children, you know, I think that spreading those ideas are just as, is just as damaging. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that should be something on people's radar if they're um, interested in uh, being reasonable and and fair minded. Um, You should not support something like that at all. And what, what I, what I find um, fascinating is, they're choosing this this hill to die on, and it's about if, if you're wanting to do something good with your money, just donate it to a, a different charity. Like take that mm-hmm. what you would yeah. what you would be giving to the church and give it to a an organization that you know isn't um, moving uh, pedophiles around. Like it it, it right. will be hard. I promise you. You could literally um, take the first one that you put in on Google, and that one will probably not have any involvement with covering up for um for pedophile it, it's yeah. what it is it's a it's a pride thing it's completely a pride thing it's a uh i'm catholic the it's the church uh is they use the excuse that it's it's a few bad apples in the um the church but the roots of the church we, exactly and the roots of the church the pope the cardinals all these are in on it like if it went mm-hmm. up to a certain if it went up to a certain level in the church like a couple priests at a couple churches you know in pennsylvania that's one thing but right. if it goes all the way up to the top then that entire organization is spoiled it's and systemic. now to, it's the, the catholic church is no different than an organized crime family they're not i mean it's yeah, the and, same and, you know, I, same thing and i will yeah. qualify certain things because people have taken things erroneously on on Twitter. Um, Just because you are against an organization that that fosters these things, that not only has systemically um, had it happen over several decades, but systemically covered it up as well and provided a network that allowed for it, um, that doesn't make you anti-religious. That doesn't necessarily make you anti-Catholic. I'm anti-Catholic only now because of what they've done, not because of the religion. They can have all the religious stuff. Believe what you want. This has nothing to do with their faith. Right? You can believe anything you wish. I am talking about the, the, the facts that are out there on the secular side of the church that has been involved from from last 70 years, at least that we know of. And it's probably a lot It has more everything to do with the faith, though. Everything. Well, I, I'm going to try to, to make a distinction, disarguendo, because if, if you start involving the faith stuff, then you're talking about a completely different type of argument that I'm not willing to get into. Other people can oh. take that route if they wish. Right, so I'm not I saying that's not. I mean, I'm not. The, I'm not going to attack. I'm not going to attack a Catholic because of their faith, right? And because that's what well, I'm getting that's accused not, that's of. What I'm, saying. I'm getting I'm accused of attacking the, their faith, and I'm not. Yeah, but the the faith is what makes them. Um, it makes them do the cover ups. It's the we can't seem to because they have. Faith. Uh, yeah. yeah, but it, it's it's a thing like oh the, the church can't be seen to um, condone this this kind of thing. Like it is the fact that they want to present this. Uh, we are the moral superiority to you. We sure, sure, command that. what the the morals are. We are the the shining light. We are uh, we are Saint Peter's rock. You know, we are the one ordained by Jesus Christ to uh, carry the message. What, the, the, what, what, the what happens if they were just an organization, Kyle? What happens if they, they got rid of all the faith? Let's say, let's say they were like somebody used the term Walmart or something like that. What if they were just a normal organization like anybody else? Do you think we would ever see? This amount of rape apologetics that's going on that has been happening in the last couple of days from what we've been pointing out, not even remotely no. close. And that's exactly why I say it's the faith that is the core of this argument, because that is the distinction between Walmart and the church is the faith. That is why it's 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 paramount. No, I think you have a point there. I, I, I definitely think you have a point there. I, I'm just I'm not equipped enough to go after their beliefs. Right. So I'm going to leave that for other people. We all have to. You know, do what we do best, right? So that's just not a, a point where I can. If I start diving into all the theological stuff that people pour, pouring on me about why the Catholic Church is true, why it's not true, um, I'm just going to be. In Wait, a, you want to bitch me out for history. asking about what the, the time before the Big Bang? But you can't go up against a, a talking snake in a garden and uh, some talking. No, the, the, the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church has day. thousands of years of history. It's very complex. People go to school for ten Whatever. years to learn about the Catholic Church, and then they <laughs> they still come out, and I don't know what the hell they believe. They don't know what the hell they Whatever. believe. I've actually yeah. had Catholic priests go through catechism or what is it, uh, cate- cate- catechism that that come out, and yeah. they still don't know what the hell they believe. So it's a very know. complicated thing. I think it's purposely made that way but me, I, i'm not equipped i i is what is it dave as to say it took me five years to get through that bullshit and you went through a lot of that training didn't you 
Yeah, I, I actually taught right of Christi- Christian initiation for adults at a Catholic church. So yeah, see, I wouldn't even be getting even. I have no experience with any of that. And I would I leave s- that for David to I go after that or something. I still couldn't tell you what Catholics actually believe, other than they're kind of they're very strict in some areas, and in other areas they don't care. Like drinking, they like wine. You so can drink. Yeah, they like you wine. can drink the hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you um, know what? Their religion just promoted: go drink some wine. All for you, baby. I might even join up. Uh, let's um, uh, we'll, we'll, since we've we've almost hit the the ninety minute mark, we'll kind of wind down. But um, just an anecdote. I uh, when planning out like the the look and the the logo for this show, we went through quite a few in the beginning. We started out with a light bulb. Um, I'm actually really glad that I went with the uh, the the Catholic i icon um icon look, and because uh, now looking pretty good like the the uh it is apropos isn't it yeah it is it's kind of it kind of fitting. well Maybe it was, there it is was a meant God. to be it was divine intervention yes. um, we were guided by the hand of god <laughs> uh well vic uh we're gonna um we're gonna give the last couple minutes uh to you to wrap up any final thoughts that you have any advice that you want to give for people who might be um watching and struggling with the idea of you know either coming out or making the first steps um to do that just whatever your thoughts on the um the whole deconversion thing and i want to thank you for uh, for coming on and uh, because it's nice for me to talk to somebody that you know kind of has been where i've been because as you can tell um steve and i don't really have anything at all in common so i can't really um <laughs> Connect we with, actually uh, have a lot more in common than people think. We we just disagree on some of the finer technicalities. But when it comes to like the agenda, I, I think that I would have to say that Kyle and I are just parallel on our agenda as far as our goals and what we want to see happen. Don't butter me up. Just now. different ways of getting there. I like Kyle. What can I say? <laughs> he's just wrong so, uh, on the science stuff. I mean, nobody's perfect, so, right? And he's got great hair. Who has better hair than Kyle? I mean, well, you. We're gonna shut up now and let but... Vic have his uh, have his final thoughts. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Okay, um, ready, man. Screw you all. You're yeah. supposed to say I have great hair. Oh, God. Dave, will you mute him? <laughs> Damn it. Um, Damn it. Yeah, so, yeah, I really appreciate you guys having me on, too. I mean, it's it's a difficult process. Deconversion doesn't matter who it is. Um, if you're coming from my perspective or if you're coming from Kyle's perspective, um, it's not an easy road. Uh you, if you are surrounded by um, other believers who are also, um, f- you know, leaning towards fundamentalism in their belief or orthodoxy in their belief, you're just going to have to come to terms with the fact that some things are going to have to be messy, um, in, and you might just have to pull away from a while for a while before, um, you know, things may might resume to um, a level of norm- normalcy, you know, with your family or. Um, with your friends who are still in the belief system. Um, and that's always hard. Um, but I, I guess it definitely helps to reach out to uh, people who are like-minded and um, who see the world um, in a much more relaxed, uh, much more uh, uh, neutral uh, way um, and aren't so polarized. Um, I think that's one of the uh, most important things to do is to just get some perspective on um, on some of this stuff because it's just, it's really hard to navigate. Um, you know, definitely do your due diligence. Definitely um, search out the answers because if you're any anything like me, um, you need that to uh, put your mind at ease. Um, and your mind's never going to be completely put at ease if you're coming from that perspective, but, um, you will definitely, uh, there's definitely a a light at the end of the tunnel, which I don't think I'm even out of that yet, but, um, I think it's happening gradually, slowly, and you can definitely get there. Um, just surround yourself with, uh, with, uh, like-minded people, um, you know, search online for people who can, um, help you through that. If you're completely, if you're, you're in an environment where, um, you know, family or friend environment beforehand where they're, you're surrounded by nothing but people who believe 
um, whatever belief it is, uh, whatever religion it is that you're um, that you're in, um, and just there's going to be there's there's a light at the end of the tunnel, like I said, and um, uh, it's okay it's okay to not be a Christian. It's okay to not be a Muslim. It's okay to not be whatever it is, uh, whatever whatever uh, religion it is. Um, and it's okay to uh, live life, not those things and your mind will be okay. You know, your, your, your psychology will uh, survive this event um, um, and you'll recover. And uh, if you're strong enough, you'll be a lot better off for it. Oh, fantastic yeah. advice. Um, and you, you said, uh, you said a couple fantastic points there. Um, live life would be, the, the biggest takeaway I would take from that, because if there's one thing that you realize when you come out of uh, any type of religion is that this is your only shot. You get one of these and yeah. um, make the most of every single second and not waste it. Um, waiting for the end to come. That's the biggest, the, the biggest travesty or tragedy that I see is people that when they're in, in religion, they're almost welcoming the end because they know that it's, um, you know, Jesus coming back, you're being called to heaven. They're, they're, they're hoping that the end comes soon. And that's such a tragedy when you only get one of these, I think. So make, make the most of it. Um, oh, we want to thank you, uh, for coming on here. You are welcome on here anytime that you want to. And if you ever just need to holler at me or Steve, um, I wouldn't go to Steve for obvious reasons. You've seen that, um, tonight, but, um, you can you can come to me uh, anytime. <laughs> um, and uh, do you that have weird? What the hell know. was that? <laughs> it's like one of the old phones, right? I'm just giving me a blowjob or something. I'm, I don't know what the hell that was. I told you. Oh. I told you it would come up again. I told you it would come up again. Um, do you have a, well, just, a channel just FYI, or like just, social media just... that you want to link people to? Um, anything that you want to plug like that? Usually, we have people. You know, if they want to follow the the guests that we have on, they can put it out there. But you don't have to. Um, I actually, yeah, I don't have any, uh, <laughs> I don't even have a channel or anything. I'm not putting any content out. I mean, if you want, you can follow me on, or yeah, on Instagram or, uh, uh, uh you can f friend me on Facebook. <laughs> uh, yeah, What's I your guess Insta? you can make a new friend. What's your Insta? Um, I'm going to be here. My... What's your Insta? <laughs> my Instagram is when I pull it up here. So I can show just you. FYI, we, we were just shouted out by a uh, high definition, high res porn .com, um, for our interview with uh, Mercedes last night. So <laughs> they've got about 200,000 subs and I, I, is good. I've noticed a couple of porn, Life a lot of porn good. companies are shouting us out and they said this, can I read this? Let me read this. They actually said this, um, come check out a funny interview with the beautiful Mercedes over the non, over at the non sequitur show. And they tweeted that out to other followers. So well, let me, getting, let me tell you, we're getting well known um, in the porn industry. There you go. That was that was actually the big bang I was talking about. Yeah, that is a big bang. <laughs> okay, what's your what's your wow um, wow wow? It's a V one K three N. V one K three N. I'll put that in the um, description so you guys can um, can follow Vic. So big thanks to uh, Vic. Hopefully tomorrow, uh, if not, I'm going to scream. I'm going to mess with these bots. Uh, some more tonight and I'm going to, uh, we'll go through some more emails that I get from them. Um, I'm going to, what I'm going to do in a couple emails is put stuff that has nothing to do with YouTube in the emails. Like I'm going to do uh B I N G O that song, the nursery rhyme, see what I get back from that. That has to be uh, good. Uh, I want to close on one thing that I, I saw in a video and it freaked me out, but um, Vic brought up the word perspective and I might actually do a red herring on this, but, there are theories that abound and I came across one last night. I'm going to try to get this guy to come on to talk about it, but wrap your mind around this. If you are looking at a world where the inhabitants or the people or uh, animals, whatever you want to put aliens is 2d. You can see those 2d characters. If you're looking at them from the view of like this, or you're over top of them, there's a certain angle you can get to a 2D character where the 2D character cannot see you because of the angle of, of their world. But you can see the 2D 
character. Likewise, since we are 3D, there could be a, a there could exist a group of things that are 4D that could be watching us from the angle that we cannot see them from, just like we would do the 2D character. Does that not blow your mind, Steve? He, he, I like well, that. yeah, but I, I actually read that in like sixth grades. There's a couple books out there, Planiverse and uh, Flatland, that are predicated on that particular. Is this the same narrative. book that you got the your 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 bullshit from the Big Bang from? No, um, uh, Flatland. If you haven't read Good Flatland, night. Flatland is one of the best books out there. It's a great book. Go check Good it out. Good night, everyone. We'll catch you. Uh, we'll night. catch you tomorrow <laughs> at, at at eight. Good night, guys. Thank you. Non sequitur. Your facts are uncoordinated.